A severe energy crisis is brewing, and the Biden administration is dangerously clueless as to what to do about it. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Rising fuel prices, which are battering family and business budgets, dominate the headlines. We haven't seen anything like this since the 1970s, when oil went from around $3 a barrel to a peak of almost $40. Gas lines became the dominant image of that era. What makes the situation today more ominous is the fundamental difference in the cause of the climbing costs we're experiencing versus those of the 1970s. Back then, the primary culprit was the weakening dollar, not a shortage of oil. Those gas lines and other disruptions resulted from government price controls. When controls were removed, the lines disappeared. And when inflation itself was conquered in the early 1980s, oil prices plummeted. The situation now is different. Yes, the Federal Reserve's mismanagement of the dollar hasn't helped, but the big cause is a global shortage of energy. What the White House plays down or ignores is that OPEC has little spare capacity. It can't flood the market to meet demand, even if it wanted to. Compounding the problem is that Biden's war against fossil fuels has cut U.S. production of oil and natural gas. Russian output is down thanks to Putin's barbarous invasion of Ukraine. There is a global shortage of liquefied natural gas. The price of this clean commodity in the U.S. is about $9 per thousand cubic feet. In Europe, it is over $30. The world is consuming more oil and gas than it is producing. That's why we should be praying for a mild winter. The answer is clear, but the big question is whether the White House will do what needs to be done. And so far, the administration remains obsessed with windmills and solar panels. The U.S. must meaningfully ramp up production of fossil fuels. The necessary capital spending, though, isn't going to take place in the current hostile regulatory environment. Natural gas output could be boosted, except for inadequate pipeline capacity. All know what Biden did the day he took office to the Keystone XL pipeline, which could have transported 800,000 barrels of oil a day from Canada. Not until the situation becomes acute and the Democrats get thrashed in the midterm elections will there be a change accompanied by a genuine sense of urgency. The steps are obvious an about-face on permitting oil and gas exploration and production on federal lands. No more blocking construction of needed pipelines. No more talk of new taxes and regulations. Stop for now the shutdown of nuclear and coal-fired power plants. We need that electricity. President Biden had better grasp that people are not going to tolerate government-made shortages and high prices as the necessary price of his fantasy of a world dominated by windmills and solar panels. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.